next. We're talking coaches and some of the most decorated and respected coaches in college sports. As a student at Kansas, Ralph Miller listened to a guest lecturer once, Dr. James Naismith, the inventor of basketball. The talk must have stuck as Coach Miller's lifetime of coaching would show. Over the years, Linfield College is known for being a national leader in sports. We'll meet the man responsible. And thoughts shared from some of the forefathers of college coaching in Oregon, Bowerman, Andros, and Casanova. All next on Great Athletes, Great Oregonians. Today's show will cover a variety of coaches. These leaders knew their sport and taught their athletes well, and as a result, these coaches are inductees into the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. And these coaches not only knew sports well, they knew people perhaps better. Because to be successful in delivering the right message to the right person at the right moment will always influence a win. And a master of that unique ability was Ralph Miller. Ralph Miller, basketball Hall of Fame coach and two-time National Coach of the Year, had books written about his pressure style of play. He coached at the college level 38 years with only two losing seasons in 19 at Oregon State. You see, a Miller coach team's execution wasn't just effective, he made sure it was perfection. Sports simply mirrors society. Both the good, the bad, and the in-between. And when Ralph Miller coach teams took the floor against you, you could bet they would be good. Knowing well the taste of victory from his college days at Kansas, over the years Ralph Miller taught his players the basics and wouldn't stand for a lack of effort or court sets. All right, hold it. You don't try to be a hero. You get the good shot at all times. That's the name of the offensive game. You get the good shot. He was an innovative student of the game. He wondered why the full court press at times was only used after a made basket. He developed ways to press after missed shots too and they worked. We never changed our offense for anybody. It's up to you to stop it. We're gonna run it right at you, right down your throat all the time. We're gonna press you. We're gonna press you full court, 40 minutes a game. You do something with it. As a result, his teams produced 657 victories, ranking him seventh among major college coaches. All right, Dean, not once. When a guy threw you the ball, did you ever look at the ball? Your eye was never on the ball at any time. That's why you fumbled it. There was never a doubt his players worked hard because he was able to describe the fruits of their labor. Coaching is merely teaching. You're teaching people fundamental physical skill for the purpose of competition. So, you got to be a good teacher first. You got to know exactly what to teach and then how best to teach it. If you know those basic rules of education, you're going to get along very well as a coach. When you think of sports at Linfield College, you can't go long without mentioning the head football coach for 24 seasons, baseball coach for 13, and the athletic director for 25 years. Of course, that's Ad Rushman. His football teams won three national championships. He guided the baseball team to a national championship as well. He's the only coach in college to accomplish that feat. His players respected him, he respected his players. Perhaps the ultimate testament. Here's another coach's thoughts on Linfield's Ad Rushman. It's been a real sincere pleasure to be able to do this introduction. And we have to have a football to do this with. In fact, this is similar to the ball that we awarded Ad this year. At the opening game with Linfield this year at, at McMinnville, our PLU football team came across the field and awarded Ad a ball that we had autographed in respect for his some many years of coaching. Ad is one of the outstanding coaches in the country. He's in the National Hall of Fame. He has done many things for the game of football more than winning games. But during the 1980s, the games between PLU and Linfield were the classic games in the NAIA. 
Seven of those ten years, the winner of that game went on to the national championship. Linfield won three, PLU won two, and were national runner-up twice. Ed is more than a champion. He is a real person who is to be respected for what he stands for. And Ed has loved the young men that he has coached, much as I feel I have done the young men that I have coached. And we just have a sincere, really, recognition of him today in this wonderful award that he's received. I've been very, very fortunate. Uh, growing up, I had absolutely great high school coaches and college coaches. Um, several of them are in the, the program and have all had uh, a major impact on my life and who I am today, and I'm very grateful for them. Uh, a special thanks again to the members of the Sports Hall of Fame for this wonderful evening. Thank you. Coming up, the story of a pilot who steered his ship for 34 years, the longest tenure for any collegiate athletic director. The story of Joe Edsel is next. Great athletes, great Oregonians. From the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame is sponsored by Nike and by D.A. Davidson. Financial advice for the long run. Financial advice you can trust. The Oregon Sports Hall of Fame recognizes and celebrates Oregon's rich athletic history. It's built on the premise that the lessons of sport provide a unique opportunity for self-discovery. Through an extensive memorabilia collection and exciting interactive exhibits, the hall teaches and reinforces character and values. Each year, the hall commits to lifelong rewards in the form of scholarships awarded to high school student athletes. Contact us about this process and the annual induction ceremony at your Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Coach Joe Edsel was a fixture on the bluff at the University of Portland. He was quoted as saying, one of the neat things in life is to be called coach. I always felt as a coach you could affect kids. You were never going to change them a whole lot, but you can affect their lives. He did affect their lives. As baseball coach and athletic director for 34 years, Joe Edsel was a positive influence to thousands of student athletes. No one deserves the title Mr. Pilot more than longtime baseball coach and athletic director Joe Edsel. When he retired from the top job in the University of Portland Athletic Department in 2004, Etzel was the longest tenured athletic director in college sports. But Joe's tenure on the bluff as athlete, coach, and administrator stretches even further, over five decades. And during that time, he saw pilot athletics grow and change from new sports and facilities to national championships. Joe took over coaching the pilot program in 1966 and began a 21-year career of excellence. 378 victories make him the winningest coach in UP history. Etzel coached 34 athletes who went on to pro careers, including major leaguers like Ken Daly, Tom Lampkin, and Bill Kruger. Joe oversaw construction of new facilities, the Child Center for Basketball, Louisiana Pacific Tennis Center, Harry Marlowe Field for Soccer, and a baseball stadium that would eventually bear his name. Etzel expanded the athletic department, adding 12 new sports. His hiring of Clive Charles gave birth to men's and women's soccer programs that have brought home two national championships. Mr. Pilot, Joe Etzel. What I miss is coaching, and even when I was administrator, I miss coaching. But sure. uh, I've told a lot of people that I was proud to call myself a coach. That's the thing I miss the most. I mean, I think uh, the message that Pat gave today about coaching, uh, unless you've been a coach, even if you've been a little league coach or whatever, the impact you can have on kids is, uh, 
is what's so satisfying. I mean, and and wins and losses are, we all die with those. <laughs> we all die with those. But when you see what you produced later on, I mean, that's, to me, uh, why I stayed in the profession. And I think th this room is full of coaches. And I think they would all say the same thing. So I, I miss being around young people. Yeah. Uh, uh, at the university, it was a great atmosphere. And Roy Love is a native Oregonian, attending Cleveland High School in Portland State. Teacher and coach, he returned to PSU to guide football, baseball, and golf. And then as athletic director, he spearheaded Vikings teams to national championships and countless league titles. This man had the vision to hire winners, the likes of Jack Dunn, Pokey Allen, and Jeff Mazaki, coaches who put the park blocks and Roy Love in the national spotlight. An eye for excellence is what has always separated Roy Love from his peers. Love played baseball at Cleveland High School and Portland State, but immediately turned to coaching and teaching following graduation. Roy's baseball coaching skills quickly reap rewards. Portland State finished second in the nation in 1962 and won the Division II West Coast Championship five years later. After coaching Viking baseball, football, and golf teams, Love began the first of two tours as athletic director, beginning in 1975. Despite working with limited resources, Love was responsible for hiring the most successful group of coaches in PSU history. Those Viking teams set the standard for victories, school records, playoff appearances, national championships. He was known for his ability to spot talented athletes. Roy Love was instrumental in improving scheduling opportunities for Viking teams by helping create six different college athletic conferences. He continues to boost Portland area high school athletics with his work on the PIL Hall of Fame and the renewal of the PIL Football Jamboree. Roy Love, a Hall of Fame. I, I don't really know how to explain it except for the fact that you got to have a kind of a gut reaction that you know somebody's going to do the job. I always felt that you're going to hire a coach and you're going to tell them two things. One is stay in the budget and two is don't break the rules and then you let them go. One of the things that I've always thought was important is that, uh, uh, you know, you work hard and uh, you surround yourself with good people and then if you can, you gotta give something back. Mm -hmm. You know, if it hadn't been for the coaches that I had and the players that I played with and the, uh, all the way from the recreation departments to the, uh, to the high school and the college coaches, you know, I, you know, I mean, I sure wouldn't be here now. So I think if I can do anything to help the kids that are out there playing now, one of the things that I would tell them is that the harder you work, the luckier you get. Financial relationships built on loyalty. There's two things that I think that there is always going to be a demand for and a respect for, and that is integrity and quality. Yeah, I, uh, uh, what I would tell our young people is, if you can provide those two things, uh, you're going to be in demand. I, I don't care what your profession is. If what you do is the best, and if, you're, if you can be trusted, you're going to be in demand and you'll never be out of work. Uh, so I don't know of any place where you can teach those things any better than you can in sports and in particular a team sport. 
In 35 years of coaching at Western Oregon State College, Bill MacArthur ranks fourth among the nation's winningest small college coaches. Coach MacArthur is an inductee in many halls, including the National NAIA Hall of Fame. He continues our string of coaches who have won much more than games. Okay, you got a chance to win yourself a ball game today. Let's get out there and get at it. He is without question the most broadly and highly skilled person I have ever known. He was a very great tailback and sprinter in Santa Barbara, where he was called Bullet Bill. A probable pro football career was ended by a leg injury in training camp with the Chicago Rockets. He is an outstanding swimmer, golfer, gymnast, skier, handball, and racquetball player, to name just a few. Bill came to OCE in 1947 from Gold Hill High School in Oregon, after having earned his master's degree at the University of Oregon. While at Oregon, he absorbed much of Jim Aiken's football coaching philosophy, which he brought to bear at OCE. And in 1949, just after two years, his team went undefeated. There were only 400 students in the college at the time. By the late 60s, enrollment grew to just shy of 4,000 students. And naturally, we took credit for all of that enrollment increase. But we were among the first to establish co-educational instructional classes for both majors and student activity classes. While there was still only one NAIA division, Bill took his football team to two national playoffs at Texas A&I and Angelo State. We fared as well against them as anyone in those years. Mr. MC, I proudly present Dr. Bill MacArthur. In football, some, not all, young men enjoy pouncing upon each other with vigor and glee. And those who are most proficient in pouncing seem to enjoy it the most. Therefore, I will answer that question about the old fool. Unlike a, a namesake predecessor of mine, who was satisfied to merely fade away, I will be out on that gridiron this fall working with a central high school group and coaching a third generation McElravey, whose grandfather and father I coached and both starred at OCE. I want to thank the Oregon State Hall of Fame for inducting me into this august body and let you know that you have done for me what I don't think anybody else could have done. You have cemented my relation as a coach, my reputation as a coach, so that regardless of what happens from here on in, I will be a famous coach. Thank you. The lessons these inductees are sharing have the ability to impact all of us. High school student athletes are also affected by those lessons. With me now, Megan Boysa from Nestucca High School. You're a volleyball star, but you played a lot of different sports. Tell me about the different sports you played and, and how that affected you and, and impacted your volleyball sport. Well, I've been in cheerleading, basketball, track, and softball, and all the sports pretty much have affected me in the same way. They give me the sense of being in a team and that's what I mainly go for when I'm playing a sport. It's all about the team, so not one player looks better than the other. We all make each other look good. And so working as a team is what I love doing with the sports. You're an Oregon Sports Hall of Fame scholarship winner, and when I look at the inductees to the Hall of Fame, you see you know, athletes who played other sports that did a lot of different things. Did you get encouragement to do that, or was that just you wanting to experiment and try different sports? Well, my encouragement was through my grandparents. They've always encouraged me to go and try new things, even if I really didn't want to at the time. They encouraged me to go and try it to see if I did like it, and I ended up liking all of my sports that I've done. So You're a senior. You just graduated. Uh, you're going to college now. What, what can you tell into college and maybe into a future career that you learned in sports? You have to be committed to what you're doing so whatever I do to go out to do to college then I have to be committed to it and if I'm not then there's no I don't want to waste my time in going off to do something that I'm not committed in. And what, what advice would you give to you know Megan Boyce had you talked to her as a freshman entering high school? Well I would just say believe in what you know you do believe and stick to your heart because I wouldn't have been here without you know the encouragement of even my coach 
who told me I was at a camp the other couple of years ago before I made it on varsity and a coach said oh you'll never be a volleyball player you're way too short and it's not possible and my coach stood up and said you know what this girl has potential just because she's short doesn't mean that she can't find a role in this volleyball team and so things like that encouraged me to do it and then it was something for me to go off and say oh yeah look I can do this now so it was just something where I I felt more comfortable going out there. Sports is full of people saying, you know, too slow, too short, not good enough. That had to feel pretty good. Yeah, it felt great. And now that I'm first team all state and first team all league for just being libero, because you don't have to be tall to be a libero. You just have to be able to get on the floor. So I have an advantage, I guess. Thanks, Megan Boisa, and good luck. Coming up, thoughts from some of the legendary Oregon coaches. That's next on Great Athletes, Great Oregonians. advice you can trust. The Oregon Sports Hall of Fame recognizes and celebrates Oregon's rich athletic history. It's built on the premise that the lessons of sport provide a unique opportunity for self-discovery. Through an extensive memorabilia collection and exciting interactive exhibits, the Hall teaches and reinforces character and values. Each year, the Hall commits to lifelong rewards in the form of scholarships awarded to high school student athletes. Contact us about this process and the annual induction ceremony at your Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Great athletes, great Oregonians from the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame is sponsored by Nike and by D.A. Davidson. Financial advice for the long run. Our show today has included some great Oregon college coaches. What did these coaches have in common? Number one, they were approachable. They had an open door policy. Players felt like they could come in and have an exchange of information with a coach. Two, they were detail oriented. They didn't just practice, they practiced until they got it perfect. And they valued the interpersonal relationship. As a result, uh, there was good exchange of information between player and coach, and players felt like they related to their coaches. The result was respect, mutual respect between player and coach. We can't forget the three college coaches who started it all for college sports in Oregon. We close the show with thoughts from three of the greatest ever. Well, first of all, I had a great teacher coach, and that's what I think a coach is. He's first of all a teacher. Bill Hayward, who coached a little longer than many people lived, and he was my coach. And he inspired me as a young high school youngster that came up here to the University of Oregon I think Bill Hayward was a, uh, enjoyed life a great deal. And if I believed in idols of all the, all the coaches I knew, Bill Hayward was my idol. I did not believe in, in taking a, a young man and, and ever, ever embarrassing him in front of his teammates, in front of anybody else. I used to, I used to have a coach, and he'd say, uh, I'd hear him say, if Coach Andros wasn't looking, I'd kick you right in the butt. During this time, why Dave Tubby, who was uh, my center and also kicked off for me, got up to go to the bathroom, and I told him, I said, Dave, sit down. So he went over and sat down, and that, uh, on the ensuing kickoff in the second half, uh, we were kicking off to Indiana, and uh, he shanked the ball, and it went down about 12, 15 yards, and uh, Les Palm uh, was out there, fell on it for an onside kick. After the game, why, all the press and saying, what a great strategy that was, uh, how you were behind and you needed to get a hold of that ball and, and to, to score and 
actually what happened and Dave said uh, Toby said later he says boy he says I had to go to the bathroom so badly that he says I could hardly swing my leg in there and that's actually what that's what actually happened <laughs> it wasn't a case of any strategy at, at all Financial relationships built on loyalty.